What's going on, everybody? Uh, this video is gonna be a little bit different. Uh, instead of focusing on the twin turbo Mach 1 or the ZL1 or the Comet, we are gonna be <laughs> doing a little DIY. I've always said, if you've got a MIG welder, a grinder, you can pretty much do anything. So we're gonna show you guys how to basically take your four post lift and turn it into a two post lift. So right behind me here, I've got the uh, tuxedo. There's all different types. This is the tuxedo. I believe it's a 9,000 pound uh, four post lift. And I went with the four post lift, as you can see, because you can safely store, you know, your car underneath another car. The other benefit of a four post lift is you actually don't need as much ceiling height because there's no crossbar that goes in between the two tops, right? Um, and it's great. Uh, if, you, if you own like a, a tire shop or you're doing brakes and stuff all the time or you're never going to store anything under it, then maybe consider a two post. But for most of the work I'm doing and everything you've seen me do to these cars on this channel, you know, you can do it with a four post lift. There's only a couple instances where it's a pain. And I think I found a simple solution for how to get all the benefits of the two post lift while just using your four post lift for a limited amount of money. Let me explain. So when you buy something like this, they have, um, you know, trays, basically they utilize these rails underneath the car um, for catch trays. There's a big metal tray right there and they actually make what's called a rolling floor or like a rolling scissor lift. And I'll show you some pictures of it. It uses these rails right here and you can slide forward and back and it has a scissoring motion that will lift the car up. So you could basically lift up, you know, the front, lift up the rear. Heck, if you bought two, you could do both at the same time and you could get your wheels off the ground, um, which is great. I mean, that's awesome. If you watch different mechanic channels, you've probably seen these before. They're super cool. They're air powered. So it's minimal amount of work, um, but the problem is costs are about $1,400. So let me tell you kind of what I devised as an alternative to this. So right here, I went out to Harbor Freight. I picked this up on sale for $90. This is their 12 ton um, pneumatic jack. So basically I can hook this up to my air compressor, squeeze this trigger right here, and this thing will raise up. It also has a stem that extends, which is great. If that were to fail, I lose electricity, I don't know, you can still pump it by hand. Um, I went ahead and made this little guy right here that I can just set on top to distribute the load out a little bit better, but you don't have to. But my idea is if I can utilize something like this, right, underneath on something that can slide forward and back, I can accomplish the same thing, right? This is only $90. I've already got a welder, I've got a grinder, I've got tools, right? So why not try to build something that I can utilize a tool like this and be able to raise my car up so that when I wanna pull, you know, the drag radials off of the Mach 1 and throw the regular tires on it, I can do that with ease. So this type of lift, and I'll try and walk under here so you can see it comes with a metal tray that would work perfect, right? This is like quarter inch steel, it's bent, it's welded, you can slide it back and forth. The problem with it is, is it sits too high. So if I were to try and put this bottle jack on top of there, it wouldn't work because I just couldn't get it underneath the car, right? So what I came up with is why not build something that is a tray that sits down lower, right? So I can set that on there and then safely stand outside the lift, press a button, raise the car up and down. I had some leftover steel. Let me show you what I came up with. So here's my chicken scratch right here. Okay, so this little shaded parts on each side, these are to simulate um, the trays, not the trays, I'm sorry, the ramps that you drive up on. So not to scale, uh, but basically something like this, get some angle, weld some 45. You gotta make sure you clear everything, have a little tray down there on the bottom. And then this gives you the dimensions of that jack. So all the way lower down, it's 10 inches from the top to the base. And then if you raise up the threaded portion, you get another few inches. This thing travels from 10 all the way to 20 inches tall when this is fully extended. So you almost get, you know, 10 inches, give or take, of rise when you extend it all the way. And you're going to need that. So what I came up with was something like this. I had some steel laying over here, you know, just left over different pieces of various sizes. And this is what I've wound up building. So I'm gonna throw the time lapse on, show you how I came up with this, talk about it a few things, then we'll see if it works or not. And basically see for a couple hundred dollars in leftover parts, can you build something that would otherwise cost you $1,400? Let's get started.
threw some paint on it um, earlier this afternoon. Honestly, if I could do it all over again, I probably would have rolled the paint on. I used a, a rattle can. It turned out okay. Hit some of my ugly welds. Um, this thing is super heavy. We'll have to weigh it before we're done. Okay, we're getting close to the moment of truth now. Got it up under there. Didn't even really let the paint dry. But uh, we'll adjust this thing and get our little piece on here. Of course, I adjusted it too far. Let it down some. Throw our little piece on there. Let me set the camera down, I'll adjust it up. Okay, we'll try it again with all the extended, see if we can get it up higher. Well, as you can see, it works. I'm super pumped. Um, I do have a couple things that I'm going to adjust. Um, what I'll say is if I could do this all over again, again, I had free stuff. So we can run through the cost real fast since I know you guys are curious. This on sale, about $90. Um, the tools, I'm not going to count the tools. I've got the Miller welder here. I've got the plasma cutter. We're not going to count that because I'm assuming if you've made it this far in the video, you already have some similar tools. Um, I will say consumable wise, um, I use my cutoff saw as well, which is a 14 inch blade. Um, you're going to go through at least one, maybe not two of those. They're about 10 bucks each. So, you know, let's say a hundred dollars between the lift and that I did go out to the store to buy some longer, uh, 3A steel just to match um, for the sides right here. And you just got my 45 cut on it. Um, that you can get, I got in a 10 foot length and it was like $2 a foot. So you can do the math right there. You're probably up to 250 bucks. And then everything else was just stuff I had laying around, extra spare stuff. I mean, I made this little guy right here out of you know leftover parts, pipe, stuff I had from previous job sites and stuff like that. You can do this for super cheap. You're gonna save over a thousand dollars. now. Downsides, that thing is super heavy. Um, what I built, like I said, I use leftover 3 8 plate and that's too thick. So, I mean, you could lift a tank with this thing. You know, you're gonna, you're gonna break the, the, the ramps here before you ever damage that thing being made out of 3 8 plate, but it's what I had laying around. So as long as you don't mind picking it up and moving it, not a huge deal. Really the only downside, the only major downside, is it worth $1,000? I think no. Um, is that if you have that rolling scissor jack, you can have it on here at all times and it never sits below. What I mean by that is if you saw in the video earlier, you basically have to drive the car up on here and then put that in place. So you're picking it up and setting it down. It is heavy. I probably should weigh it just to see how much it weighs. That's really the only downside is the weight and that extra step. But once it's up in there, you can slide it forward and back. You could use it to support stuff, to lift up the entire car if you wanted to. Again, that thing is 12 12 tons, so 24,000 pounds, right? So totally a ton of room um, to play with there. You're totally safe. But hey, I think this is a good alternative. Save yourself $1,000, put that into something else. Um, the last thing I'll say just real quick is the air compressor. You know, I'm using my air compressor over here. It's a decent size. You know, it's not a little tiny guy, but that thing does kick on when this is pumping up. So this little air motor, um, in here is air pump, I guess I'll call it. It does use a decent amount or decent volume of air. So if you've got a super tiny air compressor, that might be an issue. But hey, some of the things we do on this channel, in addition to just working on cars or DIY stuff. So let me know if you have any questions. Let me know what you think, if you would have done something differently. Um, hope this helps you guys, saves you guys some money. And if you got the, you know, the scissor jack and you like that better, tell me why. Um, next week, we're gonna roll racing. We're gonna take out the Mach 1 against the ZL1. Um, I've got some VP110, let it fuel to throw in it for the racetrack. So we're gonna turn this beast up to the high horsepower setting, let her eat, and uh, see how we do against the competition. So stay tuned for that video. Thanks for watching guys. If you haven't already, uh, please hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps me out and I would appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.